Welcome to this part of the lecture. Now that we have defined projective algebraic sets, we will take the first steps towards projective varieties by defining the homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective algebraic set. So if x is such a set, the homogeneous coordinate ring of x is the ring S of x, defined as the quotient of the polynomial ring in variables t0 to tn by the vanishing ideal of x. So this ring is graded and the ideal is also graded or homogeneous and therefore by the following lemma the quotient is a graded ring and the lemma says generally that if you mod out a graded ring r by a graded ideal j then the result is a graded ring and the homogeneous components are exactly the ones you expect, namely the quotient images of the homogeneous components of the ring you started with. Now, as with the affine case, we have the relative notions. So we can define algebraic subsets of algebraic sets, and everything works analogously. So if x in Pn is a projective algebraic set, then we can define the zero locus Vx of j in x of a graded ideal j that sits inside the homogeneous coordinate ring of x. This is simply the set of all x in x such that f of x is zero for all homogeneous f in j. And this is well defined. And similarly, we can define the vanishing ideal ix of z of a subset z. So ix of z will simply be the ideal generated by the polynomials in S of x that are homogeneous and satisfy f of x equals 0 for all x in z. And with this notion, with these notions, we have the relative uh, viewpoint on projective algebraic sets. And one can show that exactly as we had for the affine case, there is a relative Nullstellensatz in this setting as well. The next thing we want to do is to relate Pn not to the ambient An plus 1, which we, um, in which we identified points along lines to define Pn, but we want to relate Pn to the An that is an affine open in it, that we want to view as an affine open. So we want to understand the embedding of An into Pn topologically. So recall that this embedding takes x1 to xn and maps it to the point putting 1 in the 0th position and going from x1 to xn. So this corresponds to the plane at 1. So in the p1 case this is a 1 sitting here and p1 is the set of lines in a2. So how does this embedding behave topologically and how can we explain it in terms of ideals in a way that's coherent with uh, both the structure of Pn and An? So our strategy will be as follows. To each graded ideal in n plus 1 variables, we will construct an ideal in n variables so that the projective zero set of the first ideal intersected with a fine n space is the affine zero set of this new ideal. So this vpj lives inside pn where we have the subset an and we want this intersection to be exactly the zero set of some ideal. And conversely to each ideal corresponding to some affine zero set, to, so to each ideal in uh, the polynomial ring in n variables, we want to construct an ideal in the polynomial ring in n plus 1 variables so that this new ideal is graded 
and its projective zero set intersected with a n is precisely the affine zero set of the ideal we started with. Once we have done this, it will follow that this embedding of a n to p n that we have been looking at is an embedding in the sense of topology, meaning that a n is homeomorphic to its image in p n. And the image of this embedding is the set u0, where the zeroth coordinate does not vanish. So how do we get these ideals? Well, from an ideal j, we will get ji by a process called dehomogenization. And from j here, we'll get jh by homogenization. So let's look at how this works. Let's start with dehomogenization. And before we deal with ideals, let's deal with polynomials. So if we have a homogeneous polynomial, f in n plus 1 variables, t0 to tn, its dehomogenization is the polynomial fi in variables t1 to tn that is defined simply by evaluating f at t0 equals 1. So declaring t0 to be equal to 1. So for example, if f of t0 t1 is t0 square plus t1 square, this is indeed a homogeneous ideal, then f i of t1 is 1 squared, which is 1 plus t1 squared. So that's a polynomial in the variable t1. And uh, the superscript i is short for inhomogeneous. So we get a polynomial that is not necessarily homogeneous, where this uh, t0 is declared to be 1. So this map, one can check that sends f to fi is a homomorphism between the respective polynomial rings. So if we have an ideal, a graded ideal in variables t0 up to tn, we can define its dehomogenization as the set of all dehomogenizations of elements in the ideal. This is indeed an ideal. This is because this uh, map is surjective. And so it will be an ideal in the polynomial ring in variables t1 to tn. And one can check using these definitions and indeed the constructions we had of projective algebraic sets that the points in An of the zero set in the projective sense of J are exactly the zeros of the ideal Ji. In the reverse direction, we have homogenization. So now we want to start first with a polynomial, so non-zero polynomial in n variables. Uh, and we want to create its homogenization. So this will be the polynomial defined as follows. So fh of t0 to tn, where fh is this new polynomial we're creating, should be the original polynomial evaluated in t1 to tn normalized by t0, multiplied by t0 to the appropriate power so that this becomes a polynomial and not, say, a rational function. And d here is the degree of our non-zero polynomial. So for example, if I have a polynomial in one variable, that is 1 plus t1 squared, then I get fh of t0 one. So this is a polynomial of degree 2. This means that I should take t0 to the power 2. And then I need to take this polynomial where I replace my variables by their quotients with t0. And working this out, I get precisely t0 squared plus t1 squared, which is a homogeneous polynomial. And so in general, the polynomial fh will be homogeneous because we are correcting for the degrees here. And if j is an ideal in the polynomial ring in n variables, 
then its homogenization is defined as the ideal generated by fh, where f is non-zero and lies in j. And this is a graded ideal in kt0 to tn. This is for you to check. So homogenization is not a ring homomorphism. It doesn't respect, uh, it doesn't work well with sums. It does work well with products. And by the way the uh, uh, projective algebraic sets were defined, or rather by the reverse correspondence we had earlier, uh, Va of j will be exactly Vp of jh intersected with a to the power n. So uh, now we have these two constructions going from one to the other. One might ask, what is the meaning of the projective vanishing set of the homogenization of an ideal? Well, we answered part of this question. We know that the projective vanishing set of JH intersected with AN is the affine vanishing set of J. But what about if we don't intersect it with AN? So let's look at the P1 example. So P1 I got from A2 by looking at lines in this space. So here I have A1. And if I have a vanishing uh, set, so maybe it, it looks like this. And of course, it won't look like this in general, but schematically. So uh, then this, so, so I want this to be VP. J, H, and then so its intersection here is V, A of J. But what is this V, P, J, H? How can we describe it? And it turns out that, in a sense, it is the smallest possible projective algebraic set containing V, A of J. Namely, if we have x, the affine zero set of an ideal j that sits inside a n, sitting inside p n, then the closure of x in p n is exactly the projective zero set of j h. So uh, it is clear, so what do we need to show? We need to show that this is the smallest projective um, algebraic set that contains x. So it is clear that it is a projective algebraic set containing x because of the intersection from the previous slide. So what we need to show is that any projective algebraic set that contains x also contains this Set. So we want to show that if y is vp of j prime contains x, where j prime is some other uh, great ideal, some great ideal, then y contains vp of j h. And in order to show this, using the Nullstellensatz, we want to show that if j prime is an ideal, a graded ideal, contained in the radical of the homogenization of j, then vp of j prime contains vp of j h. So you might want to pause and think why this is what we need to show. Okay, so let's show this. So take some element g in j prime. We want to show that it is in this radical. So how does this g look like? Well, g is going to be f h for some f in k t1 to tn. 
times some power of t naught. So this is the uh, an element here. Is, so it's the homogenization of something. And this t naught of f h, if it vanishes on x, so if x is contained in, in this uh, thing, well, then this means that since t naught does not vanish on x, f homogenization uh, vanishes there. And uh, this means that f vanishes on x in a n because of the way homogenization was defined. So if we look at x, which was an affine uh, algebraic set in a n, then this thing vanishes on x implies that f vanishes on x. So here I should specify that I am viewing x as a subset in Pn. But then this means that f is in the affine vanishing ideal of the affine vanishing set of J, because x is the affine vanishing set of J, which is exactly the radical of J by the affine Nordstellensatz. And so this means that some power Fm belongs to J, which means that the homogenization of Fm belongs to the homogenization of J. But as I mentioned earlier, and as one can check, homogenization behaves well with the product. So this is the product, the power M times of the homogenization of F and so this means that the homogenization of F belongs to the radical of JH. And so this implies that G, which is some polynomial times this homogenization, also, of course, belongs to the radical of JH. So this proves that, indeed, any projective algebraic set, so any closed set uh, containing x will contain vpj of h. Also, one can show that if the ideal j is generated by one polynomial, that is not zero, then its closure is exactly the um, projective vanishing set of the homogenization of this polynomial. So uh, the answer to our question is that the projective algebraic set x bar is exactly the projective closure of x, meaning that f b j h is exactly x bar in the sense of the um, topology on the projective space. So it is the set obtained by adding the necessary points at infinity to make x into a projective algebraic set. So if we look here, we have a1. Here we have what we need to add. So this a1 intersects everything except the sort of infinity here. So here we added it, we added the point at infinity, and we closed this set projectively. And this is a good place to close this lecture.